you legends. We're wearing our Suki outfits, our Suki Velo Harmony kit today. We're heading out to, we're almost at the ride start, right up ahead there. That's a research forest, we're on Kirkendall. And uh, we're going to be going to Richards, Texas today. We got a few people that uh, clicked and said they would be joining us. So we just want to do a big ride, you know, get some big miles in the day. So it'll be in excess for, for the two of us, in excess of the century mark. Let's try to get through this light. Nope, we're not going to make it. Let this guy turn if you can. Hey, that's some money here. 25 cents. Only in America can you find money on the road. <laughs> so the streets are paved with coins. People throw money away. On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands. We left from the Alden Village Center with some riders, headed down Research Forest. We took Honia Egypt Road. We filmed on there for a bit, got into Honia. We stopped at Taco briefly. Then after leaving Taco, we took 1097 into the forest on Mount Pleasant Road there. We filmed that section all the way to 149. And then we took Grissom Trail back there. We were chased by that dog again, but he was not on camera. He was kind of late. And at that point, we got into Richards after taking Base Chapel Road. We came back on 1486. We did some filming until we got to Dacus. And then the rest of it is off camera. We modified the route because uh, we wanted to kind of keep the group together. The original ride had been a lot lumpier <laughs> on the way back. So we came back on Fish Creek at a good clip. It was a very, very invigorating ride. And I think that you all will enjoy the clips that we put together for you. <laughs> it is. Yes, yeah, that's what I was telling you. Bingo, you're right. That was that's Gen yeah. General Hospital. It was a soap opera. We're, we're talking about Luke and Laura. There's a song called Think of Laura. Yep. That was it. Think uh, of the character, Laura. the guy was Luke. Laugh, don't the, cry. The character was no. Luke that Laura she'd was married like to. It that way. Or she'd want it that way. Mike Barrera started singing that song and on Thursday. It stayed in our heads. He, Let's you know, just go straight to Because Laura's all riding with us. Okay. So yeah. He's, <laughs> yes, sir. That's your road, man. I figure you're definitely going to be here. I do he's, like that. I love that road. It has a lot of character. We're going on Honia Egypt Road. It has a lot of patina. You got to put your head down. This section here, get you on. We are on Honia Egypt Community Road. This is the section of it once you break off of Fish Creek, which is also called Honia Egypt up to this point, and they call it Honia Egypt Community Road. And this will stay on this the whole way into Honia. Mike Barrera is pulling. We've just reached the open road. In a little bit, Paul will call for everybody to go single file so the drivers can have more visibility to pass. This is Thomas. He's a friend of Laura's. She brought him to the ride. It was kind of cool to meet him. I think he rides a felt. I think it's a felt bicycle if I remember the brand correctly. Maybe we'll get to see it. But he's got a nice setup. He's a big boy, so on the climbs, he has challenges putting out nice the, the watch required to keep up with those lightweight riders like Laura and Clément Champousson. <laughs> from the AG2 Al Citron La Mondial team. <laughs> I love saying that. I don't know why. I love the name of that team. <laughs> you can hear the wind that we're dealing with.
So we started our own group for Velo Harmony. Yeah, we guys, set let's up do single fire. Car, car back. Car back. Paul's, Paul's calling for single fire. And a little bit of everybody will come around. It. it helps them see around us easier so they can pass. The road's not that busy. But what I'm saying is we set up our own uh, chat group to kind of organize our own rides for more consistency. Um, so we're steadily growing it. We got some riders that, you know, the area, we we're kind of scattered in the Woodlands area. People ride different rides depending on what beats their schedule. But it's kind of neat, you know, just having a little more consistency for those who are looking for this style of riding. So Laura brought Thomas so he could get a feel for what we do on our rides. Because he's been riding with the WCC guys, mowing them, different people that leave from like Whole Foods and different locations in the Woodlands area. But he's not used to the distance we're doing. He said that his longest ride was probably 80 kilometers, which is about 50 miles. And we're, this ride was scheduled to be like 95 or something. We're going to Richards, Texas. So it's almost double what he's used to. I'm sitting on Mike Barrera's wheel right now. I'm staying really close. You can see how low my heart rate is. I am making sure that I expend very little energy. We're going downhill right now, so I'm really not even pedaling. One thing about this road, you get on it and you just put your head down and ride. Got a nice line, pace line going here. It's leveled off. We're doing about 25 miles an hour. Just holding a steady pace so even though we're moving at a 22 right now but by sitting in the draft I am like at the bottom of zone one so you have to draft cautiously and carefully to keep your effort down so that when it's time for you to pull you're f relatively fresh That's Thomas. That's Laura. California. <laughs> CA. Good morning. <laughs> and she, she's a Texan now. <laughs> That's Clement Champoussant. John Mulbrick. Kind of an odd angle in the camera here. It makes people look like we're squatting on the bike. That's an odd angle. Get that bubble bubble effect from that wide angle lens. This whole section here is going up. I mean, you can visually see it. It might be one percent. And then it will kick up two to three percent in a few kilometers. So the entire direction here, you're gaining elevation.
So just a steady rhythm. You can see my watts are fairly low. And that's the idea. If you're going to be sitting in, keep the effort minimal. And the cadence in the 80s right now. So we're keeping a conversational pace. So even though this world's going up, Mike Barra is keeping things calm, keeping the effort fairly low. Because this is like a building ride. You're building aerobic endurance, building those capillaries and the oxidative cap capacity of your body. Guys, single file, car back. up again here it says one percent in the distance you can see it goes up as it curves to the right Mike Barra ended up pulling until we got within about a mile of Leah Drive So by sitting at the front at a lower intensity for long for a longer period of time, you end up doing more work. And about two percent. They they shave these curves to give more traction in the wet. Good shot here. Some of these shaved areas are smoother than others and so whenever I have to ride them I look for the smoothest section which is usually close to the center.
So that little strip on the edge is smoother because they didn't shave that. <laughs> but you got to ride it carefully because some parts of it have reflectors. The little square reflectors, you don't want to run into them. It's uncomfortable. They're like mini speed bumps if you do run over them. Descending here. In about a kilometer, we'll hit a nice little bump. It's about five or six percent, something like that. Probably five percent, five and a half. But it's short. It's coming up in about probably 500 meters where the road curves left. I, I think I remained in the saddle and I went to like the small chain ring. I probably used like a 3917 ratio. It's a 62 inch gear. You will see the grade goes up right here over the cyclist's head. It should, should get to like 5%. It's pretty substantial. I'm spinning a small gear. This is for it's more like 5.5%. So Paul goes around uh, Thomas here. We're keeping things steady. We just kind of rode that climb. There were no attacks or anything. Well, we're coming back. We attack a climb on 1486. This is a lot of fun. So Paul rides back to the back of the bunch. You can see my heart rate got up into the 140s, like zone two on that climb. So Thomas knowing that he needed to put out more watts to hang with the lightweight folks in here, he just went ahead and stayed within himself. He let the gap open and he caught back up on the downhill because on the downhill he has the advantage. I think somewhere around here, Mike Barrera is going to pull off. The road starts to go up. It's a gradual grade all the way to Leah Drive, then it kicks up. Yeah, Mike pulls off. I go ahead and take over the lead. Mr. Barrera. Yes, sir. 
Just take a little larger gear over. <laughs> Good pull, man. So since I'm at the front, I focus on staying mostly in zone two. <laughs> and this is Leah Drive. This is where it kicks up. Every time I see Laura. About three percent is registering. It's about three and a half, four percent. And that levels off quickly, but it still continues to be a grade. It's at 4%. Gotta keep it nice and steady. <laughs> Better get the word right now. <laughs> I was saying the wrong lyrics. We're descending here, slightly. Yes, yeah, that's minus one. I'm just trying to keep the effort consistent. So I'm going through the gears, shifting up. We're heading towards the FM 2854. So Honia Egypt Road ends on the north side here at 2854, which comes up in about probably I would say probably a kilometer, a little less, about a half mile. This is the FM2854. We are in Honier. At this point, we've already stopped at Taco. We are further north of Taco Corner on the FM1097, headed towards the forest, the Sam Houston National Forest. on Mount Pleasant Road, which is coming up in about probably five kilometers or three miles. Going over where the bridge meets the road, they always have a lip. They don't, they don't join them real smoothly all the time. So I always stand where they join to avoid those bumps. So the benefit of riding with others is that I'm sitting in zone one at 18 miles an hour. 
I'm just feathering a large gear. Not really working or doing anything. Just kind of rolling the gear. So John uh, Clement Champoussin Malbrick told me that uh, he decided to come join us because he likes the distances we do. Because the other guys want to do like 30, 35 miles. And on a Saturday, he wants to do more. So, you know, our rides are at least 80 miles. Anywhere 75, 75 to, uh, to 90 miles is about what we do usually with them. So, you know, we'll probably keep it around 80 in about four hours or so. So by 11.30 of noon, we'll be back in the woodlands. And uh, that's the kind of riding he wants to do because Saturday is when he has the time to go long, just like we do. So it's good to have him on uh, the board. And, you know, we post rides every week, every Saturday. I try to do it on Friday morning, give people time to digest that route. Try to add a few new roads. So on, on, this, on this route, we added some new roads that a lot of these guys were not familiar with. The roads that we discovered just by you know, Paul saying, let's check this out. Let's check that out. And with those excursions, they were, they were pleasantly surprised. The roads are very quiet. You'll see that. We filmed the whole thing here. We filmed until we got into Richards and on the way back. Hey, right. This is Mount Pleasant Road. We got off of 1097. This is on the, the bottom, the south end of the Sam Houston National Forest. We're entering the forest. The forest has residences and some farms and stuff, you know, within the forest. Private, privately owned lands exist within the National Forest. Yeah, Mike was talking about how big this thing was, and I told him, I said, in Crocodile Dundee, the character played by Paul Hogan said that anything you can walk in the territory in under three days is a hobby farm, you know, because they have vast, wide areas, you know, out there. People have huge property, so it's like just messing around. Because Mike loves all the open spaces out here. So when you've come from a congested area and you come to an area that has a lot of space, it's, it's very refreshing. And you don't have to go very far by bicycle to experience that. Where he's from, he said he'd have to drive from San Diego to like Big Bear to, to get this kind of ambiance. Yeah, the guy's pulling out his driver. He's going to end up going ahead of us, which I thought was cool because there's no point in him waiting and then coming past us again. So that was good. The road starts to go up here in the forest. It's a gradual grade, but it's pretty lengthy. So we're just kind of keeping it nice and steady, kind of a moderate intensity. See Mike's out of the saddle in the large gear, about 200 watts. I mean, it's zone one at this point. Everybody's in different zones. That's the thing. Yeah, as you get fitter, your zones will change. You gotta walk before you can run. This is the kind of riding that builds long-term endurance. Now I've hit zone two. The road continues to go up. Just a gradual, you know, one to three percent. So Laura takes over. 
uh, uh, Mike Burry, I refers to Laura and uh, John Clemencia Poussin Malbrecht as the lightweights. <laughs> you will hear us bug uh, teasing her later because uh, her bike is under the UCI limit. <laughs> That's why I said she and her bike are under the UCI limit. We'll laugh about it in a little while. We're ribbing them. Because every time the road goes up, the lighter riders thrive. They don't have to put out as many. Their watch per kilo is lower. Leveling off here. I think we're going to start descending. Yeah. So descent here, and then part of the pavement gets a little bumpy. And so you got to really watch your line, pick your line, because they've, they've tried to patch certain areas and they're not level. <laughs> it's, it's like whatever they patch chipped up and peeled away right around here and see you see that <laughs> so I'm staying near the yellow line seemed to be the smoothest spot it's out of the yellow line or the white line in that section back there so this part of it it's up and down right now we're descending and then we're gonna hit a bump that will just rob us of all our speed so you've got to find the proper gear keep your rhythm steady don't get too excited they're gonna start going harder i just remain seated you see my cadence in the 90s and then the watts were like four something when we started but that's leveling off because the road is, has leveled off a little bit we went at like a four percent bump I'm making sure that I expend very little energy. So even though we did that climbing back there, I'm still in zone one because we're descending again. That's the benefit of building your endurance over time. Your recovery is pretty much instantaneous. My heart rate continues to drop. And we're gonna go again. It's probably around 2%. It's not that much. But from here until we get to 149, it's up and down. That's another reason Paul and I like this road besides the solitude. Yeah, Mike's telling me about some headstone in a cemetery. Uh, he said one of the t tennis greats, the Hogan family. I never noticed it, <laughs> but uh, he pointed that out. We're going to get to it right there on the left by this sign. There's a cemetery there. soft pedal to kind of keep the rhythm I like to keep my legs turning as much as possible and I notice there's a gap so I go ahead and ride up same gear I just raised my cadence Laura just kept riding. She's a lightweight. She thrives in the rollers. And she just kept her effort the same. She wasn't really trying to pull away. But uh, 
you know, Thomas has to put out more watts, so he didn't want to do that at that point. In a few kilometers, we'll start, we'll start waiting for him because he starts to fall off, fall off the pace. This is a little further than he's been before. As I said earlier, he said his longest ride has been around 80 kilometers by 50 miles. So this is double the length of what he's been doing. I have to get down low, but Laura is pretty small. <laughs> so get benefit from the draft. We turn left and this road will kick up. These little grades right here in this section, they get up there sharply. It's like it's, it's really odd. It, there's no gradual change. It just hits you. That might be four between four and six percent. So we've got at least a couple in this stretch. In a little bit, somebody will tell us that uh, Thomas was, is off the pace. Might be, I think it's Paul. Paul Longo will let us know. Because the road is going back up here. All I'm doing is trying to find the smoothest path. I'll just go ahead and back hey, off. I have no idea where or how far back he is. I just go ahead and turn off the power to give him a chance to catch up. So even though these guys, the John who is in front, has said we're losing Thomas, he comes around and keep riding. So you you said we're losing Thomas and then you keep riding. Laura's brother that guy out here to do what? To leave him in the forest? I'm messing with Laura. That's her buddy Thomas. I like 138 kilograms of my bike included. And she's what? Uh, she's under the UCI legal limit. <laughs> Thomas said he's 138 kilograms with his bike included. I said, well, Laura's under the UCI legal limit. She and her bike. <laughs> put a 100 pound backpack on. Ella tried to throw you under the bus. Laura's bike is like 15 pounds, something like that. <laughs> and she's about 130 something pounds. <laughs> you know, a bunch of lightweight, lightweight riders flying up these climbs like a bunch of squirrels. <laughs> I mean, I'm 190 pounds, uh, let's say 188 to 190, you know, and so in cycling law, yeah, I'm carrying about an extra, I'm, you know, I'm pretty heavy, I'm a big guy. Most cyclists are pretty small, diminutive guys. So that's why we work on staying lean 
because if you're lean, you can really, really thrive. Even if you got some big bones or whatever. I said Laura was floating away like a squirrel when we rolled up on our wheel. <laughs> nice and quiet in the forest on this ride. It's always quiet here, but usually you get a car now and then, but we didn't get much. This stretch was good. <laughs> yeah, Mike Morrell talked about how Marks and them used to climb back in the day because they had higher gear ratios up those mountains. They didn't have all the 10 speed, 11 speed, all that stuff we have. So they, they were using like probably a 42, you know, 21 or something like that, you know, climbing this mountain. You had to get your body into it. It feels better when you move your body like that. So it, they worked, with, they did the best with what they had. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know if it's on camera, but later on on Johnson Road, I think it's off camera. I started to do the same thing. It actually felt pretty good climbing in a big gear, moving, moving your shoulders from side to side. You do whatever it takes to get you over that hill or get you on that wheel or whatever. Don't worry too much about, oh, you're not supposed to be rocking or you're not supposed to be moving your body or whatever. Everybody has a different style. Whatever works for you. You guys see Chris Froome. He kind of sits almost like cock yeah. to the side and you know whatever whatever you 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 need you know, in your yep. gate per se everybody's different don't try to mirror other people just do what comes naturally for you find your own cadence and then try to work with that and improve it and use it when you need to you need to be able to do all of it low medium high cadences all of them so right here we encounter a bunch of cars coming out of that neighborhood so i tell mike about the neighborhood this is the busiest i've ever seen mount pleasant ever there's a neighborhood back there didn't have them yeah the neighborhood to the right paul and i've been back there really yeah huh yeah it is but uh there's a big lake back there oh right around the lake yeah there's a big neighborhood back there's a community thank you Laura's talk about Paul's shoes you good man Just lower the barns. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's understandable. I weigh 120 kilos. Yeah. My bike and the bottles and stuff is almost dead. So, <laughs> 120 kilos of that is so much different than you. You know? Believe me, I was. My, I mean, I've lost about 20 kilograms since I started cycling. I was 195 pounds and I went vegan. And it dropped to 162 now. Yeah. No, I mean, I've dropped 20 kilograms already. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to lose it too fast. I'm trying to build strength, you know, so. Yeah. So as long as my strength goes up or my weight goes down, I'm happy. That's all I care about. Good. Yeah. That's right. At one point, you get strong enough, you're like, man, this is just stupid. I'm plenty strong. I can take the... Yeah, it's not uh it's not easy losing weight. I think it's easier if you just make a lifestyle change. Um I watch what I eat but not religiously. But I basically just eat what I have a taste for. I you know, I don't eat a lot of fried foods and all that stuff. I just didn't grow up eating that. I like properly cooked meals you know so i eat a lot of rice a lot of uh, noodles potatoes the starches 
that's what I need for, for cycling. You know, so I don't believe in the no carb diets and stuff. That get, that's too low on energy. I need a lot of energy. I need glycogen in my muscles. So I just I eat, but I eat high, you know, high quality stuff. So these guys are trying to decide they're going to continue these two. At this point, I'm up ahead there. I, don't, I just I had already told them bye because they said they were leaving here, and then they changed their mind. I did not know they were with us until I saw the clips. Because I stay at the front because I wanted to get a good workout on this stretch. You're tricking me, I don't. I was telling you, it's like the, the first key that behaved perfectly fine, and you said, okay, you know what? We should have another one. And the second one is coming directly from the health. Yeah. It's the sound of the devil. Yeah. And you're like, damn it. No, we, we have a good pace. So, so I don't, I don't know they're there because they were supposed to turn left at that turn, on, so. and so I'm just pulling. Double it. It's all on your mind. Just forget the miles and just ride. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, right? I know. Yeah. So, we're not... Yeah. Get it out of the way. I think this, uh, this stretch is like slightly downhill to flat. I'm settling into a rhythm. The watts are low. I think we've got some favorable wind here. Because we're doing 40k. 25 miles an hour in zone one. We, we've got to help. The terrain and the... Uh, yeah, it's descending. It's because we don't have too much wind from the back. So until I saw the cliffs, I assumed they had turned left back there, those two, because they weren't sure they were going to finish the entire route. So right now, I'm unaware that they're here. It doesn't matter. I'm holding the same pace we've been holding. It's a, a moderate effort. So this 149, if you stay on it, it will take you directly to Richards. In about 10 kilometers or six miles, we will turn right and take the roundabout way, a quieter way to get to Richards, which is more interesting. It adds more kilometers, probably about, I would say five or six kilometers maybe. But it's just better than staying on 149 and, and just have these cars zooming by. The other route is definitely more interesting. It's great for conversation. This is the kind of riding you want to do November, December. Build. Build. Get the hours in. Come January, you can fine tune, depending on when your first objective comes into play. But you need to shed the weight in the winter. Maintain the fitness from last season. That's another reason Paul and I always sign up for the Festive 500, which starts uh, Christmas Eve to New Year's Eve, Rafa Festive 500. They used to give a cloth badge and they since stopped doing that. They give uh, these elect kind of like an electronic badge on Strava. I used to take the badge and sew it on my jersey. 
because I had a festive 500 jersey. I put them on there. It's kind of cool. But, you know, we, we, I plan to sign up for it when we're going to do it. When I'm on a road like this, I just stay on the shoulder. Unless there's some obstruction or something wrong with the shoulder, I just stay on the shoulder. I only use the main lanes when necessary. And of course, I will check before get venturing out there. So when the road goes downhill like this, I go through the gears. I'm still pedaling. I shift up to keep my rhythm. I think Paul's gonna come to the front here and film. So I remember him coming up there, maybe not here. In a little while, he will come up to the front and start to film. Then when I realize he's filming just to get a different shot, I'll go ahead and continue my pull. Car the road's going up right here. It's a slight grade, which is a two two percent. Yeah. Continues here, flat, slightly down in flat. This is like riding on flat terrain, then it will kick up periodically. So all I was doing was shifting one gear, let's say, lower if, if I needed to. Not much. It wasn't that much of a change. Until we get near our turn, it doesn't really go up too much. goes up just a bit here and usually I would just downshift keep my rhythm see the watts go up I think this is where Paul goes to the front to film so I see him coming up and I'm like 
<laughs> I don't know if he's coming to take a pole or not. So I'll just watch, and then in a little bit, I see him turn the camera around. Then he's going to raise the camera. And I said, oh, he just wanted to get a different shot. So I go ahead, I will go ahead and lead the group by him. I looked at my mirror, it's clear. So I go ahead and lead the group by him. It's Mike Pereira, that is Thomas. And Clement Chepoussa, John Malbrecht from the AG2 Citron La Mondial team. There's Laura coming through from California. Rolling through. Uh, Mike Barra calls her a lightweight and then he calls John also a lightweight. <laughs> so every time the road goes up, they attack. And you will see again, we'll be on 1486 and Laura will attack one, a, a nice long climb. And I, I go with her and I just sit on her wheel and then John follows. And we caught Mike Barra unaware. I mean, he wasn't expecting it. But he's in a big gear, but he just stood up and powered it. You know, that was kind of interesting. So, you know, you got to be careful going with these lightweight riders. You got to make sure you're feeling good and make sure you can recover. Our thing is once we go, we don't back off. We just keep riding. So we ended up riding and the Lord drifted back the way for Thomas. And then they rode together and we end up regrouping when we, when we got to Degas. a good tight line that's how you have to ride you got to keep the line tight save your energy when you're not at the front otherwise you defeat the purpose of riding in a group the miles really roll by the kilometers roll by quickly when you with other riders you don't really feel it before you know it you're three hours into the ride you're like wow it doesn't seem like three hours you don't need a lot of riders to get that feeling one or two splendid just you know being able to have the conversations you'll see us conversating while we're riding when we get on the back road off of this highway and also on Tagliaferro. Tagliaferro I'm calling it by the original name Tagliaferro it's an Italian name it's a cool name Tagliaferro I believe that's 1375 we just passed. That's the Chips Hill Road. I'm gonna take Mike Barrera on there on another ride. There's a road called Osborne, Osborne Road that hits it. I don't think he's been on that one. Just to show him, he remembers all these roads. He knows the roads better than the local guys. You'll hear Paulie Longa mention it. Uh, Mike Barrera pays attention to the details. That's what it takes to excel. Details matter. The road goes downhill here. I'm not coasting. I'm riding the gear. I, I go through the gears and I keep it rolling. The road starts to go and see how much our speed drops. We went from about 27 to, to 20. It's kicking up. I think this is where I'm going to stand out of the saddle. I believe we're approaching Grissom Trail. Well, we're going to take a little roundabout way to go to Richards, Texas. And these guys are going to go straight because they're going to turn on Bethel to come back. This is a grade the whole way here. Between 2 to 3%, I think. I don't know if I'm... I think I'm out of the saddle. 
I don't know if the camera catches it or not. Yeah, this is where we turn. I'm Grissom Trail. All right, take care. It's a little jig that will take us to 1791, which on the south side of 149 is known, the west side of 149 is known as Bethel Road. On the east side of 149 is known as 1791, taking you to Huntsville, Texas, if you stay on it. That's what Laura said. This is a little jig I was talking about. She said she likes it. Gets us off the highway. So in a little bit, I'm going to walk to ride up and let Laura know about the dogs. And after telling her now, I will ride up and let John and them know. Because Mike been here before and he will remember the dog. But I wanted John to be aware. And also Thomas. There's, a, there's another curve about probably one mile from this corner. That's where the dogs live. They just moved in that area because they weren't there before. And this one dog is not happy that we, we outran him the last time. So he's always on the lookout. And then he shows up, but he, we don't film him because he showed up late. By the time he showed up, Paul and them had already passed his house. But we saw him. So I'm gonna ride up and let let uh, Laura know about the dog, so she can be aware. <laughs> I told her I said he's pissed because we beat him, <laughs> so he's gonna be waiting for us. There's a corner coming up in about a half mile. About 800 meters. <laughs> yeah, I just thought about a dog would be waiting around the corner on the edge of a building. So I'm going to ride up and let those guys know to expect them. They would be all be on the lookout. When came here, he chased us. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 okay. He's, he's a diehard. He comes this way. And sure enough, we approach the corner. They turn left. He lives in that yard. By the time we're here, I see him coming. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and we pick up the pace. <laughs> he never made it. He was late. <laughs> the same brown dog. Uh, I wish we had had the chance to film him. He came. He, he didn't break stride. He went under the barbed wire. He doesn't come on the road. He stays in the grass and races you. He had three dogs. <laughs> Yeah, Laura saw him go under the barbed wire at speed. He didn't even slow down. Yeah, there's another dog that lives here, a tiny one. He always stands here, but he's not out today. He stands, a white one, he just stands on the grass like, like he owns the place. <laughs> These dogs. <laughs> I know the dogs better than I know any owner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to know the dogs. He's the only one that takes the Yeah, that three dogs and the other guys don't care. They just look at us like whatever. And that guy is just, he's full of energy. Yeah, Mike is saying if that was a wall, oh shoot. <laughs> we have to work hard to get away from him. We'd have to sprint up that climb if it was a climb, if it were a climb. This road goes up right here, and we're going to Gap Thomas. He came. He was late. <laughs> yeah, Mike didn't see. They were already up, up front. They had already turned.
So as you get fitter, you require less watts to do certain speeds that you used to have to put out more watts to do. It's the same thing with the lightweight people requiring less watts when things go up. As you get fitter, your body gets stronger, you get more efficient and all of that. And you just start going faster with the same output, you know. Of course, your position helps being streamlined and so forth. But uh, le because as you ride, you get leaner. And so, you know. Easy, Thomas is breaking up. Yeah, Thomas is Slow off the back a bit. bit. But we figure we'll stop at the corner here. He'll be able to catch up. Right turn. This is 1791. The road went up and it just stayed. We're, we're, we're still going up. It's like a drag. This is long climb, bro. It becomes a farm to market road. You stay on it, it takes you to Huntsville. Going to Hurtsville? No. No. Today. I told you, not today. <laughs> not today. No, no, you're concerned. <laughs> John wants to mention we're not, not going today. to Hunter. No, we're not. Not from where well, we start. It'd be too long, too long of a ride so. for today. Italia Ferro. From the origin, Italia Ferro. Italiano. Yeah, in about a mile, we'll turn left. And we're going to parallel 149. It's a much quieter road. <laughs> Mike Bug and Josh, they live here 15, 15 years and never been on this road. Yeah, they, they, you, you know, the groups don't come out here that often. John just hadn't been out here with, with, that, with those guys. He really did. John said those guys like to do 30, 35 miles and he, he needs to do something longer on Saturday. <laughs> So he's with the right group. I like I to go along on Saturday. So I'm explaining to him, I'm explaining to John, that we're going to use this road to get us within three miles of Richards when we're done. And that way we would have, we would have stayed off of 149, which is busier and, and a lot, you know, a lot faster traffic. Yeah, the, uh, that ended up being like a hole on the road. It's new because I've never noticed it before. But it's one of those where at the bottom of a slight descent, we're going pretty quickly. And I didn't see it till I was on it. But the, the good thing is no one hit it because everybody was reading the road. But it's one of those things that you have to know it's there because it just appeared. It's in the concrete. And, you know, they need to drop some fast drying cement in there. It's not that big of a hole, but it can even hurt a car you know but we, did, we didn't hit it but it was there it's one of those things this road didn't need to attach that it's at the edge of a bridge right yeah right there the, the tape the concrete just has a small hole and you're going so fast when you get there yeah it just came up on us so you always have to read the road So nobody hit it, so that was good. This is Talia Ferro. It, it runs parallel to 149, which goes through the forest. So this is another piece of the forest here. Yeah, that's the hole we're talking about. That's one of those things. I was on it before I even knew. A little crater. <laughs> it's a fairy tales, you know, in the forest. Mike loves this, loves coming out here. In a little while, I'm going to come over on the left side because the right side is kind of chewed up on this road. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm capturing it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get the dog. He showed up late. They were they had already taken a curve before he showed up. Well, 
Yeah, uh, uh, that's Thomas. Thomas is saying that, how about using my, my power data to synchronize and show the perspective of a bigger cyclist or whatever? No, I told him, nah, it's just, it, it wouldn't work Mike, because uh, he'd have to be in all the frames and so forth. Uh, Plus, oh, yeah. watch yeah, per kilos, watch per oh, kilos. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, regardless of, of what you weigh, you got to work Nine yourself to do what yeah. you need to do to get over that hump. Yeah, You're good, not good ever to going now. to be as fast yeah. as a lightweight person who is fit going up a hill yeah, because exactly you're awesome. fighting gravity. So you have yeah, you to know, I mean, pace it's yourself and work that it was a, when the terrain really of is in your advantage. Yeah, it's really a sport of oxygen. Uh, it's not so much brute power anymore. Because and save your energy to just kind of maintain the we, on the clock. You know, we had a 12, 17 yeah. rear free wheel and we might have a 21 to put on in road races in the mountains, and that was that was it. I mean, you had to have some kind of brute strength. Yeah. But now with these tiny little gears, it's really a sport of oxygen. Yep. And lightweight, you know, and being as skinny, <laughs> skinny as possible, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, the sports changed in that regard. The, the bigger, stronger men, they really uh, don't have a chance in the Grand Tours anymore. Yeah. Especially since they've, they've, uh, they have watered down the individual time trials in the tours. Yeah. The Grand Tour. You know, they're not longer, flatter, power time trials like, you know, Endurance Day. So, you know, you get 135, 135 pound guys winning the Tour de France. Yeah. So, I kind of feel sorry for the bigger guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the tour has changed. Of course, the bigger guy in our sport is, you know, six foot one and 147 pounds. You know, that, yeah. you know, in the cycling world, that's a, you know, in the world tour, that's a big guy. You know, the 147, 150 pounds. Yeah. Which, which is ridiculous because, <laughs> you know, that's not the real world. You know, for me, six feet and 165 pounds i'm obese <laughs> you know i mean <laughs> yeah now i'm six two i weigh about 190 pounds they're about 86 87 kilos i don't think about it i just work hard I put out the watts 700 800 900 today? watts i have yeah. a long i can hold it that's necessary for what I'm trying to do. If, you, know, you can only do that for so long. Just the limitations of the human body. And then the Army Navy game this afternoon. What could be better? Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it was a heck of a game this year. Went into overtime, I believe. Uh, I think they had a couple of overtime. Ended up winning by a field goal. Ar Army won by three points. So Thomas was fine on these kind of roads where they were flat and everything. As soon as it, it went uphill, and then I think for the distance too, it just it won too many hills. There's a lot of hills out here. I mean, I, I like coming out here because that really got me fit quickly. Just riding these and versus, and it's more interesting than just riding flat roads. Aliafero. I prefer to ride these little rollers as opposed to just a flat road because it, it pushes you more. So you do an, you do 90 minutes to like let's say 180 minutes out here. Man, you got a great workout. Ain't nobody living out here. Mike said, "Not a lot of traffic out here. Ain't nobody. There's not many people out here. You got a house, a farm now and then. There was like one cow in this little fence area as we went by here. Once he made the comment, he's not on camera. Just one cow. I'm like, you know, some people get these animals just for the the agricultural exemption on the land. 
you, you, your taxes are lower if you running an agricultural exemption on your property you know so some people take advantage of that get a donkey or a goat or something <laughs> <laughs> So I left the music out because in a little while we're going to start chatting. I want you guys to hear everything. So we're just kind of riding along at 20 miles an hour and chatting. And it's not wind aided. You can hear the wind. We're in zone two. So as you get fitter, your conversational pace is fast. It's faster than it was before if you've been training consistently. <laughs> yeah, I remember Magnus. He does commentary then. Talking about big riders. Ended up going through the list. I started calling some of the guys like Gino Batali and uh, way back from the golden years. And Mike was like, you're going way back now. Easy to pace, man. We're dropping Mark. Yeah, we got easy Thomas. pace. You little lightweight gripper snappers. You're dropping your pin, Laura. I'm cooking yeah, out of the peanut gallery. You're going to hear the peanut gallery when on the way back. We're gonna throw tomatoes at you. I <laughs> <laughs> don't bring groceries or a speech. <laughs> you know these guys that go to speeches and they have groceries like cabbage, tomatoes planning. to throw at somebody. On the way to the speech, you stop by the local H-E-B. Get, get some, some groceries. tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, these 130 pounders, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I think John's like 140 something pounds. Laura's 130 something. I don't know. You know, it's like Laura lightweight guys. <laughs> so we slow down. We're waiting for Thomas to get back. We're going to be turning right in about 50 meters. Yeah, they did. They went straight. Okay. I'm gonna tell him right turn. I'm back there, I'm right telling him right, right turn. turn. Yeah. This is Cedar Hill. A little jig. So bring us back to base chapel, which is straight ahead. But this is here? more interesting. I don't, it doesn't look familiar, no. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember this if I have. It's a nice road though. Yeah. I it's like it. It's quiet. We come and spend time over here. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I do this road again. Yeah, no cars. Right. Just perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is not a whole lot back here. You know, on the other direction, here. coming opposite, yeah. it's a nice climb. We're going to hit, we're going to go down, deep. He's talking about From base chapel, I believe. So coming this way is a challenge. We got base Bye -bye. chapel, we got another road called Hookie Road. H-O-K-E. So that's Thomas, he's come around us, and now he's going to launch an attack. <laughs> Instead of saving his energy, he goes, because this is his advantage. You know, we're going downhill, and so he, he's, he's gone by us, and he's up ahead. So once that car goes by, <laughs> We'll go ahead and chase him down. See, I don't have the downhill carriage. I got a pedal to keep up with you guys in this. <laughs> the lightweight Thomas riders are having trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Thomas is up the road. He's gone. And I said, okay. That was a big squirrel. Yeah, man. I was like, man. Big yeah, we saw a big squirrel. Big bushy tail squirrel go across the road. The camera didn't get it. It was too far away. Too tiny. It was quick. So we start to chase Thomas here. Thomas, that's the 
<laughs> so Thomas not the poker bear. Poker bear means don't, don't upset somebody. <laughs> don't poker bear. That's a, a phrase from Mike Barrera. Poker bear. So we, we start to ride ride him down. There are a lot of little bumps on this road. Usually when Paul and I come here, we're not going this fast. So it's like uh, it was a different change. And a little bit, I'm going to tell Laura to attack him. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> then Laura attack him. Why are you going to attack him? <laughs> and because the terrain's gonna change, it's not gonna be flat anymore. <laughs> he attacked you. <laughs> and she goes, I was just messing around. And she attacks him. So we all have to lift the pace here. And at the end, you'll see me, I will dodge a bump. There was like a little crack in the road that comes up at the last minute. And we're going pretty fast. Like almost 30 miles right there. I dodged the bump. It's like a crack in the road. Yeah. So we got up to like 31 miles an hour. To, and we catch him. Now we're going by him. You're crazy, man. <laughs> 500 and something watts. We ride up, ride up to them. Crazy as crazy does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he Forrest Gump says stupid is as stupid does. Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Here, Brian says, who the hell is that? <laughs> that's Forrest Gump, folks. That's what I'm talking about. Who the hell is that, Bear Brian says? <laughs> Forest Gum and the Bubble Gum Shrimp Company. I tell you, I've ridden all kinds of bikes. I just love my steel frames. They soak up the bump like nothing yeah, else. And then right here. they let you know what the road is doing. It's like they soak up the bump, but they, they give you information about what your tires are doing and everything. So you just, you just, you're just relaxed. You know what's happening on the surface. I have a titanium frame. It does all of this very well, but it keeps it a secret. It doesn't tell me what's going on. You know, it does everything really well. It's almost medicinal, but you're not connected to the root like you are on the steel frame. That's why I ride the blue and the Colnago. I love riding the steel frame, so yeah, and uh, it's not that much heavier than the tie. It's like a one pound difference. We're dropping Thomas, guys. That was the goal. I mean, I, I told her to attack him, but I didn't know he was going to fall back. But yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. He should have saved that energy. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, steel steel is real. Because I've I've had carbon frames. I mean, before I started the channel, you know, I raced with them. I had a Calfi, and after a while, it just felt dead to me. You know, it's it's different. They they do things well, but they, they just don't give you any feedback. Not the kind of feedback I get from this steel frame. It's very comfortable. So Mike told Thomas to <laughs> to go back there. That's what he said. Eh, it doesn't matter. We're just messing around. We're gonna we're gonna regroup at the top of the hill coming up in the distance. We would group and then uh, both Laura and Tom, Thomas get on their phones and they did something and then so we, we got this we got disconnected from Mike and Shampoo and John 
and we have to ride back up to them. We're talking about a ride on Thursday. Some guy. <laughs> some guy on Thursday were riding in the flatlands on the east side of town. <laughs> he started attacking. And uh, he was fortunate because we didn't know the route that well. Plus, there were a lot of construction in the area. So we couldn't really launch the counterattacks. Yep. Yeah. That's what Mike is saying. It's one thing to overestimate your ability, but when you underestimate your opponent, you got problems. Mike said he didn't know who he was riding with. <laughs> we have a lot of riders in our area that just kind of ride around the woodlands, and they don't really want to deal with the hills out here or come out this far. You know, quite a few. So it's different when you bring them out here. The open road, there's not too many stops, and it's lumpy. Look at it. Look in the distance. That's about at least a five or six percent hill before we get to base Chapel Road. It's just a very nice road out here. Shemputa sees it. He's going for it. Now watch Laura's going to go the lightweight guys. Now that terrain has, has has appeared. So now all of a sudden they start messing around. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna launch an attack right there. <laughs> Look at the Watts. <laughs> I said, come on, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> the little guys don't like to do seven, eight hundred watts. It's too hard. <laughs> uh, well, some big boys have to do that all the time, so we get now, used to it. <laughs> you see, Mike knows the area. So at this point, we just turned on Base Chapel. These guys, are Laura and Tom, were on their Here phone loading go. stuff on social media. And so Mike and John are in the distance because they just, they're just rolling. They didn't really ride away. We just we stopped for a while. That's Thomas back there messing around. He was on his phone for a bit. We we're ready to go. And this is Base Chapel Road. A few years ago, they, they graded this whole thing down the mud and they just paved it in a short period of time. It is nice. It looks like it ought to be busier than it is, but I think they did it just for the chapel that's on this road because there's not a whole lot that this road services. So every time we come here, you get a car now and then. So it's nice. You hear the wind. So what I was talking about earlier, in these conditions, a few years ago, I would probably be like maybe 150 beats per minute, let's say, and I'd be pulling out more watts. But over time, all the training that we've done, that's why consistency pays off. So now, almost 40K, let's say 37K, 23 miles an hour, and I'm in zone one. So in this condition, riding in zone one at 23 miles an hour, in a time trial, I'll be able to do 27 or more because I'll be in like zone four. I'm using that as an example to encourage you to keep training. Some dogs barking, I told them not today. We're moving. So that's, that's a reason to be consistent. It doesn't come overnight. There are no shortcuts. You gotta stick with it. There's no off season. You know, whether you're riding a trainer or you're going to cross country ski, swim, do whatever. Stay active. It pays off. And, and as you get fitter, it will seem like you think your gadgets are off. Because, you know, you'll be riding you're like, wow. But what I do is I check my resting heart rate consistently. And that has been dropping over the years. So I'm in the upper 40s, like 46 now. You know, I was telling Paul about it, and it, I told him 36 is actually 46. Because uh, 36 would be very low. That's like the kind of low heart rate Mark's had, where they had to put something there to keep his heart rate up. 
in his chest. So 46 is the lowest I've measured getting out of bed. And just sitting around during the day is like 56 in the 50s, you know, moving around. So that's what happens. Your, your heart gets more efficient. And then as you build more capillaries, as low, your blood pressure will, go, will be lower because your heart is not working as hard to, to feed nutrients and blood to your muscles and other parts of your body. So we're trying to ride up to Mike Barrera and John. I can see them in the distance. And they're just kind of soft pedaling. I don't know if you see them up there. So this base Chapel Road is perpendicular to 149 and Riches is on the right, about three miles. That's why we take this way. It's more scenic and it's quiet. In a little bit, I'm gonna wave Laura up. You can see my watts going up. That's what I need to hold this pace on this climb. It's probably about 16 miles an hour, 333 watts. I'm in a small chain ring, probably in a 17 and a 39 in the front. You can see the guys right there in the distance. Yeah, Thomas is back there. So he did good. He did well. You know, this is a long distance for him, and this is this is. I I picked this route intentionally because the elevation ended up being. Yeah, wave Laura up. The elevation ended up being like 900 and something meters, so almost 3,000 feet of climbing for our area. That's impressive. It's almost the kind of climbing when we go to Whitehall, Texas. So Laura Cloak finishes everything off. We're within about one and a half kilometers from 149, about a mile. 149 in the distance. And the road we're on, had we not turned off, is coming up on the left. That's Talia Ferro coming up that hits this road. It must be the shoe. I said, riding great because of her shoes. She got, this, she got purple shoes that change colors. So we told Jose, it's her shoes that making you ride well. Her shoes change changes colors. Uh, it's gray on the side from where I was in the back, so it matches the bike. The color changes from purple to black, gray. Wow. It looks good. So when the light hits her shoe, the, the colors are different. From here, it looks gray, my brother. Yeah, I know. So the heel looked purple from where I was, but the side looked gray. And then when you get closer, the whole shoe is purple. So it's like she got different shoes throughout the ride. This is 149. Right, right. Paul, Paul's the kind of guy who puts shoe trees in his cycling shoes. <laughs> and he's right about that. I, yeah, right. I have shoe trees myself. <laughs> yep, he's correct. <laughs> he's right about that. When I got some of my new classic shoes, I put shoe trees in there to kind of stretch it out a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, cedar too. It had to be cedar. Yeah. None of that plastic stuff. Nope. Cedar yep. shoe trees. We have right. cedar shoe cedar trees. trees on my boot. Yep. Yeah. This is 149 headed north. Richards is about five kilometers up the road, about three miles. And this this part of it should favor Thomas so he can catch up to us now. He should be able to ride and catch up to us. We just keep riding, we figure he'll catch up Richards in the distance. Wow, look at those. I'm gonna ride up in a little bit and get on Mike's wheel. There's the animals hanging out in the pasture to the right and Paul filmed them. 
they look it looks more impressive in real life they just the pasture looks green i know i'm filming the boys this. just hanging out looking at us <laughs> <laughs> I put it in a big gear, probably in a 53, 16 or something ridiculous like that. My cadence kind of low. I just wanted to do something different. And, you know, the road's flat to slightly downhill. You have to continually monitor your fit, get a new shoe, you know, all of that. Because, I mean, my fit is dialed in, but I'm still very finicky about when I get a different shoe and how, how it feels. It needs to feel the same way. And you have to tweak the cleat position little by little to get it where you want it to be, where you're most optimal. Yeah, that was a hole there that no one saw. And Mike will apologize for it, but it's not his fault. It's one of those where the asphalt sinks. That's okay. As I ride there, you see me on his side, I'm using my mirror. I'm, I know there's nothing coming. Whenever there's traffic and it's going to be busy or whatever, in a sec then I, I can move over behind him or whatever. But right now, with that mirror, I can use the road at will because I know what's going on around me all the time. I don't have to turn around to check. So she says car back. I'm gonna drift over. See, I just glide over. I saw this guy pulling a big trailer, so I gave him more room. Those trailers are not easy to pull and keep them in a straight line. There's bumps, that's what I'm pointing out. You know, everywhere they join these bridges, not very smooth. There's a Richard City line, city limit sign. Look at that sky. It's beautiful. Wow. See the clouds, it looks like somebody painted behind it. I mean look at it, look at that. That's what you call a picturesque sky. Just as we enter the city limits of Richard. Look at that. That is beautiful. That's why I love being outside. Yeah, Richard seemed busy for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> that must be a party going on. Richard weren't invited to. Ain't nobody in this town. They're going through. There's another place called Shiro, north of here. That we visited before. It's even smaller than Richard's. Rolling down Main Street. <laughs> That's a community center building there with a the flag. This is a little grocery store that's recycle friendly. 
They have two stores here. This is a small, there's a small grocery store, and then there's another one. Then we're going to the second one. Second one's bigger. You got a place to sit. They, they almost have like a little eating area, a restaurant. Here's the Yeah. He said, Fix your up. I said, with a tear downer. <laughs> the buildings collapsed. There's a lot of abandoned buildings with the view of this road. When they have the Grand Fondo, there is a rest stop near where we're turning into this store. But this store is more robust than the one that we got the jerky from on some other films. I was not aware this store was here until Mike Barrera, I believe, brought us here the last time. Yeah, last time we came. <laughs> this store, there's a place to sit in there. They've got a restroom. The store is really stocked, so. So at this point we've left Richards. We're on 1486. We're about probably three kilometers outside of Richards. This is 1486 southbound. We're going back towards town and this will take us into Dacus, Texas which we plan to use Johnson Road to go back around Taco and Fish Creek to finish the ride. But I, I put this on here because there is like an 8% climb and you guys are going to see Laura attack the climb. And I'm going to jump on her wheel and we're all going to go. And so after she does that attack, of course, you know, Thomas is gapped, so she drifts back to ride with Thomas we keep riding because we once once we get going like that we just kind of wanted to keep it going that was good this is a chip seal road it didn't seem that bad today for some reason I don't know what it was I think it has to do with those tires I'm riding I'm using the Continental Ultra Sport 3 which are like really budget tires but they ride so well I usually use them in the winters for most of the time and like off season primarily they're, they're pretty inexpensive like 18 to 20 dollars to find them on sale but man they ride well and they're very durable i mean you know you get cuts and stuff that you can see but the, the tire the treading is still good i just make sure there's nothing in the cuts and i just ride them but man it just soaked up the bump the roots just felt comfortable you know it helps that i'm on a steel bike too so it didn't feel chippy to me you know but it is a chip seal road so yeah, and that's why I've just gravitated towards grabbing a blue bike whenever, you know, you reach for the, the blue bike. The titanium bike is there, but the blue bike just seems to talk to me more. <laughs> Hope it makes sense. The steel just gives me better feedback. I know where my tires are. So I would compare my steel bikes to like the, the, the feel of a BMW and I will compare the titanium to more of uh, like an exotic car, like you know, something that's pricier but doesn't really have trans, you know, transfer the same road feel like the Bimmers do. On a steel bike, you 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 have more information about what the road is doing, but you're not shaking. You're not being shaken. There's not there's not a whole lot of vibration. You're not bouncing around. Everything just is absorbed to where you have a lot of confidence when you're cornering, descending, you're just kind of rolling along, and it's just a joy to be on the bike. I'm gonna go around Thomas here. He starts to fall back, but I'm just gonna give him my wheel. I'm not going to climb very fast because these guys are pulling away. This is a slight grade. I don't think it's more than 2%. But he's at his limit because we've gone so much further than he has in his training. And he really just wanted to kind of to come along. Hey, Mike, if you guys are going and he, and he falls back, go ahead and finish the hill before you stop. So that way you get to work. 
So I'm letting them know, you know, go ahead, finish the hill. If you're going to regroup, regroup after the hill so everybody gets their work in. Because he's holding his own when the road is level. But uh, once it goes up, he can't, he can't back, carry guys. himself. A bunch of motorcyclists will wave at them as they go by. They come out here for the same reason we do. One more. It's not congested. Everybody was very nice on this road. We've had some headaches on this road in the past, but uh, we didn't run into any micro brain people, small brain people on this ride. It was really nice. Everybody behaved themselves. As you can see, we're about the business of riding. We're not messing around on the road. There are certain roads you can socialize on, you know, like Talia Ferro, and quiet roads. When you get on the main secondary roads, just go ahead and get to the business of riding. Plus, that's why you come out here anyway. This shiny part of the asphalt nice and smooth that's where the cars have worn that groove that's where you want to be you don't have to worry about punctures because it's clean and it's smooth this is where Laura goes that's the 8% climb I had told her about the climb and I pointed it out when it got there and so I saw her go and I'm on her wheel. And uh, John Mulberry is on my wheel, but Mike was taken by surprise. So he's going to stand, but we're going so hard. You look at my watts. I'm holding 500 and some watts this whole time. That's not easy. They're going down. The watts are going down because I think it's lessening or something. But still, now I'm back about 400 and something, almost 500. So that for that time, it's like 45 seconds or so. I've been holding 400 plus watts. I went ahead and went around Laura at the top, and then turned off the power right there. The hill's over. The mic's gonna have. What was that about? I said, I don't know. <laughs> That's what he asked me right there. I said, I don't know. And then we're gonna continue. I go ahead and slip behind Mike as they come by. So you got to be able to go hard and recover. I got up to like 164 beats, my heart rate, you know, but I was holding 500 and something watts. I said 400 plus for almost a minute, you know, 45 seconds or whatever. I've never really timed how long I can hold them. I just ride and do what I need to do. But that's kind of nice to see here. We we're going for a while. That's why you have to be fit. We just went 500 watts. That's what I did anyway. And now we're not backing off. This road goes up again. We have Gap Thomas because we had two climbs. This is the second climb. And so we have a huge gap on him. And Laura's going to pull Come out back. to wait for him. She'll pull out of the line. She's going to drift back to him so they can ride in together. It's, it's getting colder. Right here, it felt colder. It says 28 Celsius. It doesn't feel like 28 Celsius. It felt like 24, 75. 75 Fahrenheit. What I did notice on this ride, I told Paul about it, we got the diggers quickly. There's another bump here. So Laura's pulling out my for her to stay there, but she said, nah, I gotta go get back, get back to Thomas. 
And so we're just going to keep going. And we'll figure that we'll regroup in Degas. So Clement Champoussin is pulling right now. John Mulbrick. So if you can't go very hard and then sustain this, you would have a problem in this situation where we blasted that long climb and then the group never slowed down. Road's going up here. Probably two to three percent. Says two percent there. So it's a tough stretch after that six to eight percent climb. We've had two successive climbs. to the left so I don't have to break we're descending of course I checked my mirror before I moved out I knew nothing was coming the road's gonna level off here so as you notice what I'm just soft pedaling or putting power down I'm not moving around on the bike I'm already where I need to be and I just pedal if you're having to move around and you don't like where you're sitting on your saddle, then you need a you need a fit check. You need your your your, your saddle position checked as, along with your click position. You shouldn't be looking for a place to sit. You should already be where you need to be on your saddle. In a few kilometers, I would notice that uh, John's having trouble with the wind because it's really blowing. And these, you know, the smaller guys on the flat road or in the wind, they have problems. And so my heart rate keeps going down and he looks like he's struggling. I figure I'm in a little while, I'm going to just go to the front and take us into Degas. See my heart rate 115 is dropping because I'm sitting in the draft I'm very close to Mike's wheel. It's actually dropped below 110. It's flickering back and forth. I actually ended up grabbing the belt thinking it was malfunctioning. I was like, this is too low. But you can see the watts are light. Right there, I think that's why I grabbed the belt. Yeah, those guys are out of sight. Laura drifted back. Yeah, right there, I'm adjusting the belt because I thought the heart rate monitor is on the fritz. No, it wasn't. I'm going to go to the front. John's having challenges in his wind. I just slip in front of him. I put my head down, look at his wheel, and just slip in front of him so he can sit in the draft. Now my heart rate went up 10 beats. And I kind of, I think I end up getting it around 140 something. I want to keep it up there. So sometimes when I'm training and I come to a red light, if there's an option to do a loop around so I don't have to stop at a light, I do that so I can keep moving so my hurry doesn't drop too much. Especially on shorter rides. I don't want my effort level to get too low.
just riding through the gears. I'm clicking through the gears as we ride. The wind is kind of blustery and I just settled into a rhythm. The road goes up here a little bit. Probably not more than 1%, just a slight bump. Says two. This is Dekas already. We got that quickly. And Paul would, would tell us it's Dekas. We call it Jorge. Jorge is the, the, the name that I think is the owner of the store. Here's a Jorge. So I don't know what you all did, but this is part of what we did on Saturday. Remember, get your K's in and keep all the doctors fired. Okay. <laughs> 